You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we need to ponder on the things that's going to draw us closer to God, not, not more towards the flesh and walking after the flesh. Romans chapter 8 says, For if you walk after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, then you will live. So I was listening to that music in the church, and in my spirit, I knew that is not God music. Even though it says Jesus and things like that. I knew in my spirit, that is not God's music. And I'm not going to worship to that. And I'm not going to sing to that. And I'm not going to... And, and, you know, and actually, this was a long, long, long time ago. But the pastor was a little bit upset with me because I wouldn't worship to that. And I, would, and I just said, that's not God's music. That's what I told the pastor. And I'm not going to, be a, I'm not going to partake of that. And a few years later, the person that wrote that song and did that song and sang that song, I saw him on TVN, on a Christian TV station. And he was being interviewed on TVN. This was, this was several years later. And he told TVN, he said, well, at the time that I wrote that song and did that song, I was not a Christian. It was a Christian song. He said, I was not a Christian when I wrote that song and did that song. He said, I was, on, I was high on cocaine and drugs. Come on. You see, that song was not inspired by God. That's, that song was inspired by demonic influence. It was a, it was a real popular song. But, but he, said, he said himself that he was under demonic influence when he wrote that song and when he performed that song. And that's why that spirit, that's the spirit that I was getting. I was getting the spirit that was behind that influence. Have you ever heard of acid rock? Do you know where that name acid rock comes from? It's because the guys who wrote the rock, they were on acid when they wrote the rock. And they were under demonic influence when they wrote it. And when they sang it, they were under demonic influence. And there's actually demons that go forth in that kind of stuff. They go forth from that. And it like sensualizes people's flesh to walk after the flesh and to do fleshly things that are not godly things. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. And so that kind of influence is there. You say, Pastor, why are you getting off on the music and things like that? It's because what we feed our souls, That's right. what we feed ourselves has great influence Amen. in our lives. And it's going to cause us, if we walk after the flesh, it will cause us to die. It will cause us to get away from God. It will cause us to walk after the world's ways and not God's ways. And we need to be feeding ourselves and dwelling on the things of God that are good, that are edifying, that will yes. build us up and not tear us down, that will get us closer to God and not farther away from God. We are spiritual beings. Amen. We are spiritual beings. And we're going to be influenced by spirits. That's right. Alright? Because we're a spiritual being. And the, the spirits we choose to submit ourselves to are what's going to control our lives. That's right. And so we need to learn to submit ourselves to godly spirits. Mm -hmm. Spirits that are of God and not deceiving spirits or unclean spirits or unrighteous spirits because all those things that enter through the spirit into the soul. Alright? The next verse. What verse am I on? Um, th this one. I don't verse 22 is what we just read, right? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 23. This is the verse I've been trying to get to. <laughs> but we've, we've gotten a long ways. Up to this point, right? Come on. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Sanctify you holy. The word sanctify means make you holy. And the word holy here means complete. So the God of peace make you holy completely. Your complete being. Alright. Tom... Tom is a spirit, a soul, and a body. Yes. That's a complete Tom. He is a spiritual being. He is a living soul. He is a body. That's right. A man is a three-part being. Spirit, soul, and body. Alright? And the Lord, the God of peace, sanctify you, make you holy completely. I pray your the God, I pray God your whole. Spirit, say spirit. Spirit. And soul, say soul. Soul. And body, say body. body. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ. We need to be holy, spirit, soul, and body. That is who we are. Yes. Now the spirit, we are, we are made in the likeness and image of God. God is a spirit. And so we are an eternal being like God and the angels are. Do you know the angels will always exist? Do you know Satan will always exist? Do you know that every person on the face of the earth will always exist? Why? Because we are all spiritual beings. Yes. We will always exist. Spirits do not cease to exist. That's right. They can be separated from God, which the Bible calls spiritual death. The Bible calls God. God told Adam, He said, The day that you eat, Adam, the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. But they didn't die physically, but that day. They died the day they ate of the fruit. They died. Their spirit was separated from the Spirit of God. That Spirit of life that God breathed into them. And God breathed the breath, the Spirit. The word breath, Spirit in the Old Testament. And God breathed the breath, the Spirit of life into Adam and Eve. And man became a living soul. His soul was alive unto God. Our souls can either be connected to God or connected to darkness. They can either be connected to light or darkness. They can either be connected to God or the spiritual influences of the world. And we, as a living soul, we choose. They choose. choose. They choose. We choose what path we take in life. Some people think, well, I'm just born this way. I just am like this. This is just how I am. And so I'm just always going to be like this. And I'll never change. Well, you're not if you just walk after the flesh. But if you decide to submit yourself to the Spirit of God, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have become yes. new. And when it says all things, it's not just part things. It's all things. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you look that word all up, it means all. Oh. <laughs> it really does. I looked it up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. God wants to change us. From walking after the flesh to walking after the Spirit. In Romans 8 it says, For if you walk after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the Spirit, what? The Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of life. But if you through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, then you will live. Listen, folks, somebody said, well, uh, my spirit didn't sin, my body sinned. Well, that's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> my spirit's okay, my body's just sinning. No, your body's not sinning. It's like telling somebody, well, I didn't shoot the guy, the gun did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but who pulled the I didn't murder him, the gun did. Throw that Smith and Wesson in prison. Your body's just like, kind of like the gun. Your body does what you tell it to do. That's right. Did you know that? Yes. And so what you decide to do, that's your soul. Say my soul. My, my soul. soul. We are a soul. And Adam became, and man became a living soul. We are a being that has a mind, a will, and emotions. You have emotions, right? Some people Now you think some people have more emotions than others. But really, some people don't have more emotions than others. Everybody has just as many emotions as anybody else. Alright? Is that true? Yes. We all have emotions. Yes. Guys cry as much as, you know, can cry just as much as women. You know, sometimes guys will hide if they cry or something. They don't want to see, I don't care if somebody sees me cry or I mean, I can cry. I, we're watching some touching movie. I'll be bawling and Kathy be sitting there going, Are you crying? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I got something in my mind. I like him. <laughs> That's what Daniel used to say. He'd get, he'd get touched. God had touched him, you know. And, I, and Daniel, I had to see God touch him. And, and he said, Oh, my eyes are just fine. You know, I said, I don't want to admit you're crying when you're God. But the soul part of man is who makes it, who makes us who we are. Now we all are different. Yes. You know everybody has their own personalities. If you have children, you know. If you have more than one child, you know that kid's totally different. 
My boy Daniel, he's totally different than David. David's totally different than David. They are two separate individual people. You know, God works with us with our own personalities. Amen. All right? I mean, God knows we got all different kinds of personalities. I mean, there's person, different personalities. That's good. <laughs> Somebody go, you're strange. I say, we're all strange. <laughs> We've all got our little strangeness thing. All right? We're all different. In our own way. And that's what makes us who we are, okay? God works with us in who we are in our personalities. But as far as walking after the flesh or walking after the Spirit, doing things the world's ways or doing things God's ways, we're able, by the Spirit of Christ, by the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, God's able to make us whole, yes. Spirit soul and body to take those old things. Well, you know, that's always been my family. My family's always been that way. You don't have to keep being the way they always were. Thank you, Lord. Well, I was just born that way when Jesus came to change you. That's right. Glory to God. We were all born in sin. Mm -hmm. We were all sinners. I've heard people say, well, kids don't lie. Listen, folks. Kids were born to lie. They don't have to learn how to lie. Kids were born to lie. You ever seen any of those videos? This little, this little one and a half year old. They'll come in the room and they'll have cookie stuff all over their face. And the mama will go, "Have you been into the cookies?" And the kid will go, "No." No! And mama goes, Are you sure you haven't been into the cookies? And they go, No! <laughs> Where'd they learn that? They didn't have to learn it. We are born sinners. Yes. We are born in sin. We are born to sin. That's why we need a Savior. Yes. That's why we need Jesus. Because there is no way for us to be delivered by our own means. We're born that way. We're born in unrighteousness. Some people may have different tendencies that are unrighteous than others. Some people may have tendencies. And, and you know, this is something that I want you, hopefully you can get. There are actually, you've heard of like generational curses? There are actually demons in the spirit realm. You know, demons live forever. Okay? There are demons in the spirit realm that have gotten involved through, through people submitting themselves to the enemy in certain areas. That have gotten involved in certain families. That have, when the parent has, when one generation passes, they just go on to the next generation and follow that same family. There are familiar spirits that follow generation after generation. And you see certain families that they have the same kind of things going on with them over and over. And people say, well, that's just their genetic makeup. Those genes were just passed on. There are demonic influences that follow families generation after generation after generation. And listen, folks, Jesus came to set us free from those things. And the Word says, submit yourself, therefore, Thank to God. Lord. Resist the devil, yes. and he will flee from you. Yes. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes. The word creation means a new species, a new thing that never existed before. The Bible says now we have the seed of Christ Jesus. We have the DNA yes. of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what our parents' DNA was. It doesn't matter if your mom had that disease and she died of that disease and her mother died of that disease and her mother died of that disease. That don't mean you have to die of that disease because Jesus took your infirmities and He bare your sickness and with His stripes you were healed. I am the God that healeth thee, says the Lord. Glory.